I have completely stopped using Express.js and Node, and I'm gonna show you what I'm using instead. This is Hono, and it kind of looks like Express, and this is a good thing. Express did a lot of things right. It's a really incredible framework. It's just become outdated and slow compared to these modern alternatives. Hono can run on any JavaScript runtime, so you can run it on Node if you want, but it also runs on things like Lambda and Cloudflare workers, and my absolute favorite is Bun. It's ultra fast and lightweight, Wait, it's only 14 kilobytes and it has everything that you would need in a web server. So it handles middleware and testing and it even lets you write JSX instead of having to use something like EJS. So I'm gonna set up a project just to show you how this all works. Let's make a server folder and I'm gonna bun in it a new project for this. And let's just open this up in VS Code. So this is a minimal bun project and we can set up an HTTP server by calling bun.serve and passing in a fetch function. And let's run this on port 3030 instead. And I am gonna run this with bun watch index.ts. So we got that console log coming out and this is running on port 3030. So that's how easy it is to set up a server on bun. But now let's add Hono to this. So I'm gonna bun install Hono and go back here and import Hono Hono from Hono. And it's gonna feel a lot like Express. The first thing I do is create a new app. And then this just plugs straight into Bun's server. So instead of putting a custom function here, we're gonna pass in app dot fetch from Hono. And now all HTTP requests coming into the Bun server are just gonna be handled by this framework, which gives us a much nicer API. So let's go back over to Hono. Let's look at routing real quick. And you can see that you get all the route methods that you're already used to. There's tons you can do with all this. I'm just gonna set up a basic route for now. So let's go app.get hello. And then instead of rec res, we get this context object. And then we can use one of the helper methods. So let's return some JSON here, hello world. And this is all in TypeScript, it's all type safe. Uh, let's see what actually happens now if I go to slash hello and we get that JSON response. And let's go back to Hono and you can see it basically has all the features that you would want from Express, uh, including these groups here. So I'm actually gonna copy this example because I think a common thing in Express is to make a routes folder and then organize your routes in here. So this example has books.ts. Uh, and I'm just gonna dump this in here. I need to import Hono. I create this new router using Hono, and then I set up a bunch of routes. I should actually export this. So let's export default book. And then in my index.ts, I can just import this app.route books, book router, perfect. So now if I go back into the browser, I can go to slash book, and it gives us this text that's coming from the routes over here. So so this API should be really familiar, except that instead of rec res, we now have this context object. Let's go back to the documentation. We can see all the things that context gives us here. So all incoming data and outgoing data is handled through this context object. And it's a really convenient object to use. We can return JSON, we can return HTML, which is also how we return JSX. And somewhere down here, yeah, there's a streaming API. So this one is really cool. I'm just gonna copy all of this code here because I used this recently to set up a GPT app and stream down the LLM response. So I'm just going to set up a loop here and we're going to await stream dot right line. Hello, I, and then we'll sleep for one second. So if I delete the rest of this code, I'm going to call this uh, slash stream. If we go back into the browser now, we should be able to see an HTTP response being streamed down to the client. So let's see. Hello, zero. Hello, one and this is working but streamed all of those down incrementally like you see modern apps doing and this was so much easier to get working on Hono than it has been on any other framework I've tried using. Let's look at the next thing here. So there is middleware. Again, this works kind of like Express. We can use custom middleware or we can use some built-in middleware. So actually it's probably pretty handy if we include the logger middleware that we can import straight from Hono. So I'll put that in here and now every 
every time I go to a request, I should go to slash hello. Uh, in the logs, I should be able to see what's going in, what's going out. So that's kind of nice. Then there's helpers. These are all really awesome. I'll let you check those out. Then there's JSX. Just imagine if instead of EJS, you got to use JSX as your templating language. So I'm going to pull this example code out here and I'm just going to make a new page. Let's call it page.tsx and dump this code in. Uh, and then I need to import Hono. Uh, and then I get this error because I actually need to change my TS config JSON settings. So let's go here, TS config, JSX at the comma. And then at the bottom here, I'm going to remove this. And instead, I'm going to export default uh, top. It looks like this is called. So I'm just exporting the JSX component out of this. And then in my other file, I'm gonna import top from page tsx and I'm going to paste in that code and I think that any file that uses jsx needs to have the extension tsx but now I've got my normal route set up and then right here when I want to render some html I can use this jsx which is awesome so let's just make sure that worked if I go to the root route here I get that jsx page rendered and this isn't a replacement for something like next.js or remix but it is a really nice lightweight solution and it does support a bunch of React React features, like you can use async components. It does have support for suspense, but it's really just a lightweight layer that is going to render the JSX as HTML and send that down to the client, which means there's also no client side JavaScript here. So if you did need to run React in the browser, you would probably set up a Vite application with your Hono server and have those two work together. And leave me a comment if you want me to make a tutorial on how to do that. So let's check out testing now because if you've ever tried to test an Express app using SuperTest and Jest, this is basically the better version of that. So it's all built in already. I can just take one of these examples. Let's go for this one. And at the same time, I'm gonna open up bun because I wanna take a look at how to write test the bun way. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this code example too. And if I go back in here, I'm gonna make a new file index.test.ts, paste in the bun code, but instead of just testing that two plus two equals four, let's test, yes, I'll import describe and I'll need to import the app. So import app from, actually I'm gonna refactor this slightly. So I've got my index file with all of this in it. I'm going to take all of this Hono code out and I'm going to make an app.tsx. So this file creates the app, sets up all the routes and then exports the app out of here. Then my index file can import app from app and this will work just as normal. And then in my test file, I can import that app. Perfect. Okay. So this will make it really easy to test that API. So now I can make a request to, let's see which routes I actually have set up. Let's go for hello. So I'm going to make a request to slash hello. And I want to test that the status that comes back is 200 and that the response that comes back, the JSON that comes back is actually hello world. So I can paste that in here. And instead of 2B, I'm pretty sure it has to be 2 to equal. And then I'm going to go back into terminal here and I'm just going to run bun test. And of course that passes. It was a very simple test, but I just wanted to demonstrate how easy it is to start testing your APIs with this framework. Let's now take a look at validation because this is probably one of the most important things to have on your web server. Users could send any type of data to your API and you need to validate that data before you do anything with it. And we have TypeScript, which works to check our types before our code runs but we need to make sure we have something in place to check our types as our code is running. So this is a really nice thing to have at the API layer. And down at the bottom, I think they have a Zod validator, yep. So we have to install this middleware. So I will bun install this, and then I am just gonna copy this code to demo how it works. So back in app, I'm just gonna dump in this route here, and I'm gonna need to import this validator, paste that in at the top. I also need to make sure that I have Zod installed and I need to import that as well. And then this is complaining because I'm not matching that signature, which is a really good thing. So let's just return something out of here. And then this works in a really similar way as before where I have app.post, I have my route, but now I have this validator middleware in the middle that is gonna make sure that the data coming in, I'd actually probably make sure this is JSON, 
data has to be a JSON object with a body property that is a string. And if this requirement isn't met, then it's gonna send an error message down to the client. And that leads into the next awesome feature of this, which is RPC. So if you did set up something like your React app with your Hono app, you can export the type of the route that you create with the validator. And then in your client application, you can import that type, import the Hono client library, and then you get type safety on your client as well as your server every single time you make an HTTP request. And this works kind of like TRPC, but it's baked into Hono. And there's a lot more to explore here, but I'll let you check it out for yourself 